So he just walked with them. We have a covenant now. He walks in us. Talking about walking out? I know it's a song. <laughs> Amen. We walking it out. And he walking out through us. Am I right? Amen. Rooted and built up in him. Not rooted and built up in my own ideology. Not what I've been exposed to 10 years ago. Not how I feel today. Not by hearsay. Not by what somebody else has superimposed upon me. Not because of my environment, how I was raised. I'm rooted and built up. I'm being edified in the things of God. As a result, I'm being established in the faith as I've been taught. That's what I know, y'all. Folks be trying to tell me, and I've had folks tell me, and they say, hey, apostle, God has called me to do such and such, and there's an anointing on my life for such and such. But if you're not rooted and built up or extending or expanding or growing or ascending, that's a form of being built up, you cannot tell me that the truth that you've heard has now found a position on the inside of you that are going to transition you to the very expectations of your heart. I'm going to see it. When you build up, I, it's, you're visible. I cannot bypass it. If you're written and granted and built up, there's no way I, I can overlook you. There is no way. I have to acknowledge it. But there is a process. I'll tell you there is a process. Yeah, we're going to do this thing. We've got to be rooted and build up and established. So this is what we got to get. We need to be established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. In other words, you're so excited, you're so elated, you're so passionate about what you're hearing that it's contagious. People are like, we can just see. You don't come to church look like you've been baptized in pickle juice. You, <laughs> you don't look like a sourpuss. You come into, but you know, you see some folks, you be like, man, look, I just had a good time in the car. You're messing up my high. <laughs> Am I right? You get around and say, man, I'm having a good time. I get around you. All of a sudden, I go from 10 to 1. Right. <laughs> Buzz kill. For real. I've seen more people happy getting out of church. Then they praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> right. I see more folks get a smile once they leave out the door. Not in this church. I've seen in other churches. Not in <laughs> I see some folks just be so excited. Woo -hoo -hoo. I'm about to dodge that bullet. <laughs> get up out of this place. <laughs> in the spirit realm. You can see, I can see it, man. I can feel it. I'm like, man, this is not torture. This is not torture, this is treatment. This is not torture, this is treatment. I'm trying to treat you. You have a disease. You have an infirmity. I'm trying to equip you. Remember the word catatizo. That's what I'm doing. I'm catatizo in you. I'm equipping you. I'm removing defects from you. I don't want you to be defective. Your defection is going to affect your family. Not just your immediate family, but your children's children's children. So when even you ain't even the earth anymore, they have no pattern. Yeah, pretty much. First thing, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Got a whole bunch of that going on in the body. Got a whole bunch of Facebook, all these social media platforms, Clubhouse, and and and, and what's some of the other Twitter. And you got all this philosophical uh, views. I, I think I called it syncretism some time ago. How we modulate and bring things together. That just me. Okay, never no, mind. <laughs> just bringing all these other different versions, and we try to keep this apothecary, and we try to this is co concoction that we got, and we try to get people to believe like us. And that's the spirit of humanism that's, in, that's, that's somehow permeated into the church. We're not humanistic. I'm going to say it again. We're not humanistic at all. We're not supposed to. We're in it, but not of it. We have been summoned from a higher authority. There's a government that lives on the inside of us. We need to refer to him. Philosophy and vain deceit. 
the traditions of men and the rudiments of this world. But not after who? Not after Christ. This is the problem. This is the yoke that's been imposed upon the church. These are the things that we have to get free from. Tell you that we gotta get free from. Yeah, we gotta get free from these things. It's imperative. Tell your neighbor it's imperative. It's imperative. Yes, it is. It's imperative. We we gotta get free from philosophy. We gotta get free from vain deceit. We gotta get free from the traditions of men. And that's and because these things have caused us to be unequally yoked. And like I started this teaching with Isaiah 26, 17 to 18, we talked about we brought forth wind. And that wind is, 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 is that wind is not a good wind. You know, as he said in Ephesians 4, 13, is that the wind is talked about where they use deceitfulness and, and the slight, uh, the mere slight, I think, yeah, slight of hand. And it's talking about how the certain things that crept into the church. Because it's imperative. Our teaching shapes us. Because it presents to us a perspective. So when things are being taught, it gives us an opportunity to reshape our life. Because that's what transform means, to shape, to take another form, right? That's what we, we come to do. We come to take on another form. When teaching comes over and over, this teaching like this and other teachings have come, it, it shapes to you. It gives you, it, it gives you an ability to write a new canvas. To transcribe a fresh vision. A renewed understanding as it relates to the things of the Spirit. This is what God wants to do. This is why apostles and prophets are so necessary. So necessary. They hate man-made boxes. I hate being in the box. I know redundancy is good because sometimes you have to bring it certain teachings over and over and over until we get it, till the light comes on. But there's some other things that I've been saying for 12 years or so that I need to get to. That are important, just as important as where we are right now. But it's all predicated upon our response. As a house. So that we can what? Be rooted, built up, and established in the faith. Abounding. Not plateaued, not leveled off. This is not talking about church growth. It's not talking about uh, numerics. It's talking about maturity. Isaiah 26 said he weighs spirits. He weighs our spirit. What is the capacity of your spirit? What is your aptitude spiritually? Has it increased? Has it enlarged? I mean, you understand? Isaiah says it too in 54. He says what? Spare not. Right? Lengthen your what? Core. Stretch forth your curtains. Strengthen your stakes. That's just expansion. That's what should be happening with us. We should be stretching, strengthening, and lengthening. As a collective house. Prophet Kevin Lee, I'll never forget one of the most transformative messages I ever heard from any man when he talked about Holy Ghost stretch marks. I still know the scriptures. And that was in 93, uh, 94. Man, I had a, I ate that day, I ate and slept. It was all that just said, I pop it in on work, pop it in on coming from work. I said, I'm going to get this, I'm going to know this thing verbatim. That's when my ears start opening more. And I was able to perceive God because I connected to that frequency. There are some Holy Ghost stretch marks we need today. Yes. How many know that uh, stretch marks, uh, uh, a woman have a baby, but how many know there's some residual? Mm -hmm. In our body, there's stretch marks. I lost my weight in some areas, and I, I got stretch marks. Yeah. I was like, what the world? <laughs> I got on my elbow. I'm like, what the world? <laughs> okay, I'm probably saying what else. <laughs> but, but it's a good thing. You know, it just lets me know that something happened. 
And there should be certain things in our life that we should be able to have some things we can refer to. Yeah. That God has been in this place. Come on. Now Jacob, Jacob said, you went to sleep and know God was in the place. So we don't want to be people that don't know when God shows up. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right, let me move on. So with the rudiments of this world, the traditions of men, this is something I put down a long time ago. I wrote, philosophy is what they think, what people think. Vain deceit is what they create, what people create, what they conjure up. Could be their own reality. That's, that becomes deceit. Traditions of men is what they heard. Hearsay. I mean, I think traditions of men has caused the church a great effect. Harm the church. Rudiments of this world is what they desire. And not after Christ is what he's destined. Amen. I put it in the group. So these are the things we have to be what after Christ. All of our teachings, all our instructions, all of our perceptions, all of our perspectives, all of our core values, all of our convictions have to be after what? Christ. It has to somehow be inoculated from philosophy, vain deceit, the tradition of the men, or the rudiments of this world. Somehow the table has to be clean. Somehow we got to make sure that we're being able to uh, interpret the things of the Spirit correctly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If not, the yoke of religion will continue to stigmatize us. Tell you that we don't want to be stigmatized. We don't want to be misled. We don't want to have an empty deception. We don't want to be fabricated by the lies of men and women. We need people who has a sharp tongue, a clear sounding word, to rightly divide the, 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 the word, orthotomeo. This is what we need. We need to have a word that's going to rightly divide us, that's ready to prepare us into every good word. Anybody want a word that's going to rightly divide you? 